Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so I've got two more wines that were actually donated to me or given to me by people. Um, so I'm real um, interested to see how these how these work out. Uh, the first wine, get right into it. By the way, it's next week will be Albarino because August 1st is Albarino week, so the show shows up on Monday, which is almost a week before Albarino Day, which is August 1st. All right, so... And I have to record that next week. So this is the first wine I have. Now, uh, somebody I work with gave me this wine. Um, she is a member of a thing called Naked Wines. Now, another type of you know online thing. Now, this is a group of winemakers, um, or, or sorry, it's like angel investors for winemaking. So let's say you're a wine, might want to make some wine, but you don't really have the funds to do it. Well, this company will help you obtain the capital to be able to make the wines. Now, maybe you don't have vineyards, but you're able to access vineyards or whatever. Um, so there's a, I can't remember how many, like a dozen or so, maybe a little more, um, people who are winemakers on this site. And it's basically crowdfunded winemaking, okay? So um, I guess almost, almost like the garage wines taken to the end level um because they might actually be using their garage to make it all right anyway um so she's a member of this thing you have to be a member you're called an angel now they have archangels so these people actually run the company that invested a lot of money and other people could be investing a lot of money it felt like ah i was like why did everything get dim all of a sudden so here's what we're going to do we're going to turn on the other light here Now, hopefully that helped out. Actually, that's not too bad. No, oh, it's really now. Now I'm really lit up over here. Um, so yeah, the uh, the shop load over there, that that uh, bulb went out finally. So time to order some more from Amazon. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, so that's the deal with this. So this is uh, the David Akiyoshi. Uh, 2013 Petite Syrah. Um, it's out of Clarksburg. So um, he's in Lodi, and he's been wine, be making wine at Robert Mondavi's Woodbridge for 25 years. So effectively, this is a side project for him. Um, so uh, they're calling Lodi an undiscovered, an undiscovered realm. Is that what they said? Yes, David is a master in an undiscovered region, not realm. Screw cap, so no, uh, who's he what's it for this? So, man, that is inky black, isn't it? Petite Syrah. So this, um, can't buy it because it's sold out, but it sold for, or supposed to sell uh, for $19.99. If you're an angel, you pay $11.99, okay? And I told them I was in Alabama, so they say we can't ship to my state because it was the first day on the list. All right. Now, just before we get into trying this wine, so this was given to me at work and uh, stayed at work for a while and then I was kept forgetting to bring it home. So I put it in the car and then I went to work the next day forgetting I had it in the car still. Now, it wasn't it wasn't terribly hot uh, that day. Matter of fact, when I got into the car, it was not very warm at all. Um, not too much warmer than the house felt. Well, maybe a little warmer than the house. Um, and I parked in a parking garage, um, which was totally covered. So it is possible this wine could be heat damaged. With that said, the person who bought it told me that she didn't really like the wine. She didn't really taste like any Petite Syrah that she likes. Um, whereas other and, and some other people on the website, when their reviews said they didn't like it. But 
vast majority of people said they liked it. Matter of fact, it said 88, I'm sorry, 85% of the people who bought it and drank it said they would buy it again. All right. So just to put it out there that I may have screwed up the wine. I hope I didn't. So far, it doesn't smell like it's been damaged, so we're, we're good. But definitely uh, fruit forward, like really, you know, darker fruits. And maybe a tad bit of minerality to it, a.k.a. earthiness. There was a discussion um, about the use of the word minerality on the Guild Song podcast a few months ago. And it's really a bad term, but it's become a become part of the vocabulary for psalms because minerality is supposed to encompass anything that's not fruit or floral, right? Or, you know, because supposed to, so earth is somehow mineral, but and so is rocks, you know, smelling, you know, licking rock type of thing. But anyway, I say mostly plum, chocolate, Rich, um, it smells really good. I don't really get a whole mess of anything else like wood or floral or anything like that. And of course, long time viewers know floral normally escapes me, especially on red wines. I almost never get floral, at least not on the nose. Okay, the wine is totally fine. Um, I didn't, I didn't screw it up. Um, it's tasty. Um, it's almost Merlot-like because of a lot of plum to it, um, but it's you know really dark and inky, and um, it's definitely full-bodied. And I think that's what um, the person at work was like. It was too, too bold for her. She wanted something not as bold. I don't mind bold petite sera. I was going to say, someone I think said something very much. Now, as someone said, it doesn't taste too heavy or bold. And I would say it doesn't. It's not too terribly bold, but it's not, it's not really thin. And uh, they've also said that it takes, you know, a little bit better. Someone talked about dark berry, red licorice, and a dollop of cream. Maybe not the cream. I could see the red licorice, though. I could see that. I've never used that really as a, um, as a descriptor. But I could maybe see that. It's juicy. Oh, yeah. Look at the mention on the last show. Yeah, I shaved. It was time. It was time to shave the beard. I didn't fear the beard. I just got tired of the beard. So now I don't look like I'm my age anymore. At least not as much. Yeah, I mean it's it's a good wine. Especially it's for 20 bucks. If if this for, for retail, 20 bucks, it's a good deal. If you're in this angel program and he puts out another one and it's what, $12? Yes, buy it. I don't think you'd be disappointed with it. Um, you know, I said it's a little more low light because of all the plum, but it, it, there's also a little bit of, you know, non Merlot like quality to it. But um, I mean, if you had a, like a, a stereotypical Merlot from California against this, they, they probably taste very similar, but there's a little bit of a difference to it. Plus, you're helping somebody with their little side project. 
Um, I would not be disappointed in trying this wine. You know, I would not be disappointed if I spent the money on the wine. All right, so let's go to wine number two. All right. Okay. So, wine number two. All right. Excuse me, man. I got the, yeah, whatever. I'm not sure if you're actually picking up those belches or not. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you're not. So another wine donated to me by somebody in the wine industry. Um, AKA they work for a distributor and they were like, try this wine. Not for work, but like, hey, this is a cool wine. You may want to try. All right. So this is the, and this is the, you know, of the four that I've done, I've, I've tried today, this is supposed to be the premier wine because it's expensive. Um, this is the double 2011 Double Eagle Red Wine from Napa. Now, this is, um, you know, a, a kind of a side project. So, real quick on this. So, you've got three people that are involved in this wine uh, or involved in all this stuff, okay? So you have uh, a gentleman by the name of Vance Rose, and he is the winemaker, okay? Um, he's traveled all over the place, um, and he met the, the Grieve people. I'm assuming it's Grieve. It's G-R-I-E-V-E. -E. Um, and uh, he started making wine with them, and that's David and Kathleen Grieve. And... Um, in 2002, they bought the the, uh, the vineyard that they're in, and this is in um, the Lo the Loval Valley, and that I think they said is like just north of Carneros. And you have to, yeah, I thought it was looking kind of weird. I wonder, I wonder if something's messed up with the because uh, I'm, I'm getting way too much. Stuff there. Anyway, if I remember correctly from the uh, from the description, the um, you enter this this valley from the north. You can't enter from the south. And they're known for their they're known for their Sauvignon Blancs. But they've got this Napa Valley um, red wine, which. If I remember correctly, it's mostly cab. And we're going to head back to that. Um, so real quick, a double eagle. What is a double eagle? A double eagle is um, a uh, the rarest of scores you can get in uh, golf. It is what, three under par, I think it is? Um, so if you get three under par, that's... So that should be pretty darn good, right? Oh, by the way, it's $85 from the winery. So let's see here. Uh, 2011 was the fourth consecutive cool vintage, blah, blah, blah. Um, they've been making this since 2006. It's a Cab Merlot, Cab Franc blend. Uh, and that's... Uh, yeah, 45% Cabernet Sauvignon from St. Helena, 32% Merlot from the Grieve family vineyard, 15% uh, Cab Franc for St. Helena, and 8% Petit Verdot. And they harvested, 2011 was like one of those, they call it a cold vintage, and it was long, and a lot of people said it was a sucky vintage. Well, as I've said before, and, and if you watch my Napa Valley series, um, many of the winemakers said, if you know how to make wine, 2011, while it was a challenge, you still can make good wine. And I'm going to say, I mean, I've had a lot of 2011s. They've been just fine. Maybe a little bit different than what you're expecting, but that's what wine's supposed to be. You know, we're supposed to have, like, you know, vintage is supposed to mean something. Not, It's not McDonald's, okay? It's not Coca-Cola, where every single year the wine's going to taste exactly the same. I know that House, uh, sh you know, champagne houses do that for their non-vintage because they're looking for consistency of style, okay? But, you know, if you're having something vintaged, if you're putting a vintage on it, you're wanting something that's, you know, has some, maybe, you want to be able to know that this is 11 versus 12 versus 10. 
I mean, maybe if the vintages are basically the same, okay, they'll taste the same, but it was kind of the point of like talking about how good or bad a vintage is, right? And I've heard a lot of people now say that 2011 may turn out to be a pretty good vintage once these wines get a little bit aged to them. All right, so on the nose. I don't know if I'm smelling the wax or not, because this is the first time I've used the Corvin with a wax, uh, with something that's encased in wax. But I seem like I get something like that. But I do get chocolate, maybe some cherry, red fruit for sure. Vanilla, maybe some cedar box. And there's something else, something else about it that I can't put my finger on. But not an unpleasant uh, nose at all. Okay, so remember how we have, this is basically a Bordeaux blend. So is this. Super Tuscan, kind of typical, I guess, I don't know. Typical California red blend. Not in a bad way, just saying stylistically, bigger, bolder, more body to it. Not that you, like I said, not like in this one where you're not, you know, I said you want to have like, you know, some heavy food with it, but it doesn't feel as, it doesn't feel as, as like dominant as this. This feels really dominant, really powerful. Like you really need like ribeyes, um, pot roast, brisket, stuff with lots of fat to really soak that up. You know, that kind of thing, heavy sauces, um, but it's very fruit forward. So, I mean, you're really getting the fruits. I also get that fuzzy tannin. Um, it's, it's a pretty good wine. I mean, it's an $85 wine, and it tastes like an $85 wine. Um, I mean, if I can get it for a little bit cheaper, I think it'd be good. I mean, I've had some stuff that was over $50 that's, a, that's as good or pretty close to it. I've also had wines that are like $100, $120 retail that are... Uh, as good too. So, I mean, this, this wine, you could, you could argue say can really run the gamut of like price point where, um, quality. So you've had wines that can taste as good as that, but I've also had this wine taste as good as higher price wines. Um, I mean, I think they're sold out of the 2012. Uh, let's look real quick. Now they still have the 2012. So, I mean, I, I would say if you can find it, buy it. Uh, if not, you know, wait for the next one. But it's a good wine. It is, it's good. Now it just comes down to a matter of style. Do you like this type of style of wine or not? If you don't, then move on to something else. Get the Coronado for $54, okay? I think that's going to do it. I need to check the needle on here. Maybe that, that first wine, I kind of loosened the needle because it feels like it's, the gas is not coming out right. Um, do that. Um, next week, Alberino week. And then after the week after that, I don't know, cause I've got to record just, not just the Alberino show, but I got to record some other stuff. Cause then after that, I've got Texom. So if you're going to be at the Texas Sommelier conference, uh, shout, give me a shout out on Twitter. Um, and, uh, if you have my phone number, you can text me, <laughs> but, uh, email me, send me a, send me a tweet, send me a Facebook, uh, message. Uh, that you're that you're out and about. I'll be there every day, all day for for volunteering. Um, so I'm looking looking forward to that, seeing all my buddies up there. And then, um, as always, uh, again, sealing a note out of Levy Dalton Levy. I need to send you an email. Hopefully, I've already sent it by now. 
to see if maybe you want to get interviewed there. I tried to, I tried to do that with uh, Livy when I was up in Jersey, but he wasn't able to do it. And I know he's going to be at Texon this year, so I'm going to send him an email probably uh, tonight to see if he will be available for an interview because I think he's a pretty, uh, pretty awesome guy out there. Even though he already got interviewed, and I, I don't know what else I can bring to the table with that, but I'll figure something out. Anyway, um, so click the, li click the links. Of, oh, sorry, to steal the page out of his book. Hit iTunes. Give me the five-star rating. Helps out with uh, people finding, out, finding the show. Click the links above. There's an iTunes link up there uh, to friend me up. Uh, hit the donate button over there. Send me a few ducats. You can leave comments. There'll be links below for these wines. And uh, check me out everywhere. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.